our merciful and loving Father. We are so thankful, our Father, that you bless your servants to be able to come before your holy presence to listen to your holy words. We thank you, Father, for guiding those of your servants whom you've given me. Do this to expand your words. We ask the Father to please be with them. Guide them as they teach your words. So that, Father, all of us are listening will be able to understand your truth. And will be filled with the Holy Spirit to continue on fulfilling our obligations and serving the most holy name. We pray, our Father, that you would not only let us be listeners, let us be doers of your holy words, so that we may be able to attain that eternal life that you promise unto your servants. We pray, our Father, for all of your servants, wherever they may be this evening, especially those that may be ill, we ask your Father to heal them if it is thy holy will. Those of your servants that are being oppressed, those that are being persecuted, those that are in hiding, separated from their family, and those that are in jail. We ask you, Father, to continue to throw your loving arms around all of your servants and guide us so that we may be able to overcome the trials of life and continue on serving the most holy name. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask that you please be in our midst as we listen to your holy words this evening. We ask you, Lord, to please touch the hearts of all of your servants and take our prayers to the Father, asking the Father to hear our prayers and forgive our sins so that we can continue to serve you and our Father until the end of our lives. Our Father in heaven, we truly believe that you will be with us throughout our Bible study and you will continue to guide your service throughout this new year because we ask everything in the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, once again, we are going to study the words of our Lord God within the Holy Scriptures that should serve as our guiding light, our basis and foundation on how we should conduct ourselves as we continue to sojourn in life so that we know that we are not relying on our own knowledge, our own know-how. Rather, we will continue to rely on our Lord God and his teachings and continue to walk the path that God has given unto each and every one of us. In a lesson that was taught by Brother Rania G. Manalo, it is important for us to understand who among God's people or members of the Church of Christ who will become even stronger in the future. It is our intention, beloved brothers and sisters, to make sure that as we continue with our journey towards the fulfillment of attaining salvation, that we should not be slowed down or hindered by anything that would keep us away from receiving our salvation. It is our intention that we become stronger, firmer in our resolve, so that we will be able to finish our race and receive the grace of salvation come judgment day. What better way it is to ensure that by making sure that what we are doing is not in accordance to our will or what we only think is right or what we believe others also believe as right. But what is really taught by the Holy Scriptures that has been preserved and strictly followed and taught by the messenger of our Lord God and also by Brother Felix Y. Manalo. As you may well know, brothers and sisters, we just commemorated the birth date of Brother Eranio Manalo, who has been instrumental to the success of the Church of Christ, primarily by 
ensuring that the members of the Church of Christ receive the pristine doctrines, the very same doctrines that was taught by Brother Felix Y. Manalo, whom we are all fortunate enough to also receive, understood, and continue to follow to this very day. Why do we even mention that, beloved brothers and sisters? Well, in fact, inside the institution headed by Brother Eduardo V. Manalo, the mere mention of Brother Eranio Manalo and his legacy is more of a threat than actually commemoration of one of God's chosen leaders of his nation. We, on the other hand, continue to commemorate them and remember them, not because we worship them like others do, but because it is what is commanded in the Holy Scriptures. Let us begin our study as we read what is written here in Hebrews chapter 13 and the verses 7. Remember your former leaders who spoke God's message to you. Think back on how they lived and died and imitate their faith. <clears throat> it is commanded that we remember our former leaders, those whom God used as his instrument to teach us about his words, his message, and his commandments. What should we do about God's leaders? We should emulate the way they have lived their lives and imitate their faith. So it is not something that would fall into idolatry by worshiping or um, putting them in a pedestal in such way that we worship them like gods. No. It is in a way for us to appreciate the life that they have lived and how they lead as an example of the kind of faith that they had, which we should also have, especially as we continue to worship our Lord God. How did the former leaders like Brother Felix Y. Manalo and Brother Eranio G. Manalo demonstrate the kind of faith that they have? that we should also emulate and imitate. Let us read what is written in Isaiah 40 and the verses 31. But those who trust in the Lord for help will find their strength renewed. They will rise on wings like eagles. They will run and not get weary. They will walk and not grow weak. What kind of faith did the early leaders and also the early nation of our Lord God possess? They have that trust in our Lord God. That trust solely on the power of our Lord God is what gave them strength. Strength for them to continue fulfilling their duties to our Lord God. Imagine during the time of Brother Felix Y. Manalo, where in there were giant religions during their time. The Catholic, Catholic Church the Protestant church and other churches who overshadowed the church of Christ. That is why even during the very beginnings of the church of Christ, they were persecuted. But that did not stop them because their faith is not on their knowledge, their strength, or their know-how. Rather, their trust and hope is with our Lord God. That is why from their humble beginnings of the Church of Christ, it grew and um, even spread throughout different countries because they preserved the pristine doctrines taught by our Lord Jesus Christ and the apostles. The very same preservation was conducted by Brother Oranio G. Manalo during his time. That's why the Church of Christ grew even more spread even more, and more and more people were able to listen, understand, and embrace the teachings and commandments of our Lord God. And those who have received the same pristine doctrines that held on to their hope and trust in our Lord God found themselves, even though they were going through trials and tribulations, they were also going through hardship and sorrows, but their strength got renewed day by day. That is why the Bible describes it 
as that they will rise on wings like eagles. That even though they run, they will not get weary, or no, or nor will they grow weak. That is why many of God's people who continue to put their trust in our Lord God, even though they go through the ups and downs in life, day by day, they may encounter different trials, problems, burdens in their life, but they will not stop because their strength is being renewed. That is why, beloved brothers and sisters, as we embark into a new year that God has given us, not only will we commemorate our former leaders, we will imitate their faith. We will emulate the life they lived as they put their trust in our Lord God. So how can we continue with this journey, putting our trust in our Lord God, and succeeding in fulfilling our duties unto him. Let us read Philippians chapter 3 in the verses 13 up to 14. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Have we perfected our faith, brothers and sisters? I believe not. None of us probably could ever have the, the guts to even say that we are close to perfection of our faith. But we are striving day by day. We may not have achieved it, but we can grow closer and closer in achieving it by focus, uh, focusing on one thing, and that is forgetting the past. And looking forward to what lies ahead. What does lie, lie ahead, brothers and sisters? The fulfillment of God's promises to his people. Those who will remain faithful to him. What lies in our past? All of the sufferings, the hardship, the trials. Even the sinful nature that we have lived in our lives. Those should remain in our past. What can you say about your past, beloved brothers and sisters? I think all of us, each and every one of us, would have probably a few things in common. We can say that in the past, we have probably failed our Lord God many times. We have fallen short of his expectation. Probably when we went through trials, we failed to put our full trust in our Lord God. There would be those who may have grown cold in their faith, failed in fulfilling their duties. There would be those who have strayed away or those who have completely turned away. But for those who will remain faithful, even though they, go, they went through all of those trials, this is the point wherein we will let go of the past, forget the past, and look forward. To our future. In that future lies the price, the heavenly price that awaits God's people, whom our Lord God is calling. Each and every one of us have our own calling, brothers and sisters. We cannot rely for our salvation on other people. Each and every one of us have, has been called by our Lord God at a specific time a specific reason, and a specific way. Maybe others were called because they themselves witnessed what was happening inside the institution. There were probably those who were called because they started reading about what's really happening, the anomalies and corruption happening inside the Church of Christ headed by Brother Eduardo V. Manalo. There are those who have been called because their relatives, their loved ones, were the ones who cast them away because they have become fanatics. There are those, believe it or not, up to this day, are now just starting to open their eyes of what's really happening. God is calling his people to follow him. There are those who have been called. They followed, but then they stopped. Or they have been turned away. Or they have strayed away. But there are those who have been called, 
and continue to be called, continue to follow God's teachings and his commandments. How can we continue, brothers and sisters? How can we make sure that we safeguard our calling from our Lord God? What should be our perspective in the life that we live now in order for us to completely forget the past and look forward to what lies ahead? How did the early Christians, how were they able to do it? Let's read, continue reading here in verse 20 up to 21. <clears throat> but our homeland is in heaven where our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, is. And we are looking forward to his return from there. When he comes back, he will take these dying bodies of ours and change them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same mighty power that he will use to conquer all else everywhere. Beloved brothers and sisters, once we are able to wrap our head around the fact that this is not our final destination, this is not our homeland, Rather, heaven is our final destination. It is our homeland. Then we will start to realize that attaching ourselves to this world and everything material to this world will only hinder us from looking forward and moving forward. Because what lies ahead is what our Lord Jesus Christ and our Lord God is preparing for us once our Lord Jesus Christ returns to fetch us, replace our aging and dying bodies into a glorious one just like his own. But for those people who have lost track of what's truly important, have lost direction up to where they are heading, will just focus on what's here, on what they want to achieve here. They would invest everything that they have, time and effort and money into this world and all the material things that it offers. So why would they even bother worshiping our Lord God? Why would they even bother setting aside time for prayers, Bible studies, and worship services? Why would they even bother helping those who are in need? If all they can think about is amassing all of the things materially in this world for themselves. But that is not for God's people. That is not how God's people are able to look forward and move on towards our final destination. So who among those who will continue in their sojourn will eventually reach their final destination. Let's read Job chapter 17 and the verse is 9. The righteous shall move onward and forward. Those with pure hearts shall become stronger and stronger. So among God's people, the righteous ones, those who will continue to follow God's teachings and commandments will be able to move onward and forward. Now, other people might say, hey, we have also moved onward. We have also moved forward. We have um, taken ourselves out of this institution, and thereby we are now moving forward. But the question is, what about your hearts? There are those who probably moved on, but their hearts have taken them somewhere else, probably into a new faith probably into a new religion. Probably they have focused themselves into other things rather than in performing their duties to our Lord God. That's why there are those who have already started their own path. They have been led astray. There are even those who started their own religion. There are those who made their own group and that, that's it. So for those of God's people who will move forward and onward, only those with pure hearts will become stronger and stronger. That is why, beloved brothers and sisters, it is important for us to safeguard our hearts because this is where everything comes from. Once our heart 
will become greedy and becomes impatient and would want attention for themselves. They will throw away everything else like humility, compassion, understanding. All of those things will go out the window. They would just rather be popular or get everyone's attention. They would want things for themselves. That is not the pure heart that will be able to move forward. But for those who clearly knows what they should do as being called by our Lord God, with pure hearts, they will become stronger and stronger. Who among those who, pro who received the teachings of our Lord God, who were able to move forward, but will not be able to become stronger and stronger, nor will they reach their destination? And upon identifying who they are, how can we prevent ourselves from being just like that? Let's read Hebrews 12, 1. Since we have such a huge crowd of men of faith watching us from the grandstands, let us strip off anything that slows us down or holds us back, and especially those sins that wrap themselves so tightly around our feet and trip us up. And let us run with patience and the particular race that God has set before us. Beloved brothers and sisters, it is so easy for a person to just stop. You know, especially if you have already gone through a lot in your life. If you have experienced trials or continue to experience trials, not only you, but your family. Why would you even bother and go through the same pain and sorrow and hardship when you can just choose to do what other people do? They probably just go on with the flow, go with the mob, or probably just ignore everything else. But because we are being called by our Lord God, we feel the calling in our hearts. We follow God's teachings. But for those who have also received the calling, those who understood the teachings, there would still be some things that would probably hinder us or stop us. What would be those? Those would be the sins that would wrap themselves so tightly around our feet that we would trip, that we would fall, that we would stumble that we would be easily offended and find ourselves not following God anymore. That is why we have been admonished by the apostles. Let us strip off anything that slows us down or holds us back. Can you think of something that slows you down or holds you back from fulfilling God's teachings? I remember this particular question, beloved brothers and sisters, because as I remember during the initial stages or years of our journey, many people have been enlightened. Many people opened their eyes. A lot of people knew exactly what was happening inside the institution headed by Eduardo Vimanal. But when it comes down to finally following our Lord God, they hesitate. Why? Because of the different circumstances that they may have. Other people would say, you know, brother, I have my relatives who are still in the Philippines. If I do what is right and make a stand, you know, they might target my family. There are those who are probably thinking about their family, family that's with them. If they make this stand on God's side, then their family would disown them, especially their parents or their children, their loved ones. There are those who were concerned about their livelihood, their career, their studies, even their relationship. And one particular um reason that I remember is that somebody told me, you know, brother, I, I would really 
want to follow, but the problem is my daughter. If if my daughter knows that I'm a defender, that that I know the truth, that I am against what is happening, then she would disown me. She would forget about me and follow uh, the leader in that institution because all of her friends are there, all her social circle is there. Honestly, I, I did not say anything about it. I, I did not even tell her to, to do it or not to do it. I just told her, the mother that I was talking to, I, I told her that, sister, each and every one of us has a calling from our Lord God. It is not up to me to tell you what to do. It is up to each and every one of us to consider how our Lord God is opening our eyes and calling us. What we do with that calling is up to us. But there would be those who would be slowed down or hold, holding us back. And there are different uh, reasons for each and every one of us why there are still those inside the institution. What's holding them back? There are those who were held back, but because they finally said, I cannot stand it anymore, I would choose God and not whatever it was that was holding them back. And then they made their choice. They made their decision. Once we are able to make that decision, according to the Bible, we will be able to run with patience the particular race that God has set before us. This is a very specific race. This is a very specific and particular path that God laid down for his people as he continues to filter those who will remain faithful to him and those who will be held back or slowed down by different things in life. Now, other people might say, you know, brother, I know the truth. I know what's happening inside the institution. Even if brother Eduardo V. Manalo continues to hate his brothers or sister or his mother or his father, I'm not affected by that because that's not my, my faith. If he wants to do that, if he wants to lead the church into commercialism, into politics, into corruption, well, God will judge him for that not me because i just want to worship i just want to remain inside the church because i believe that if i remain inside this church even if it's headed by a corrupt leader then i will be saved come judgment day so let's test that principle then that way of thinking that mentality would that even pass the measure of the apostles, our Lord Jesus Christ, and our Lord God, who will eventually save those whom he will choose to be saved. Let us read Romans 6, 15 up to 16. What then are we to conclude? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under God's grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that when you continually offer yourselves to someone to do his will, you are the slaves of that one whom you obey, either slaves of sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness, right standing with God. So if one were to choose between Eduardo V. Manalo and our Lord God in heaven, they might say that I'm just worshiping. I'm not following if he ever... Um, <clears throat> If he commits a sin in the sight of our Lord God, then that's on him. But that's not on me. But if we continue to have fellowship with him, then the Bible says, when you continually offer yourselves to someone to do his will, you are the slaves of that person. And we already know that if Brother Eduardo V. Manalo cannot follow the commandment of our Lord God to honor your father and your mother, to love your brother and sister, even your enemy, then who's committing sin? 
who will be righteous in the sight of our Lord God. That is why it is important for God's people to understand the teachings. We may have all received the doctrines, but when it boils down to the very end, it will be among those who will follow it and those who will not follow the teachings of our Lord God because of fear of man, because of fear of persecution, because of fear of of losing everything that they have in life. But those with a pure heart who will be able to move forward and onward, who will become stronger and stronger, are those who will be obedient, not to man, but to our Lord God, which will lead to righteousness or right standing with God. So what should we obey? Among the teachings of our Lord God. Among the commandments of our Lord God. Especially now in our time. What is expected by our Lord God. That we should be able to continue obeying. Isaiah 117. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the cause of orphans. Fight for the rights of widows. When others chose to do evil or be among those who do evil, they become part of evil. If you choose to be silent, then you are on the side of the oppressor. We should seek justice because there is injustice. If a person choose to be silent, then he is part or an, or an accessory to injustice. When there is an oppressor, there are those who are oppressed. Which side will we be in? The side of the oppressor or the side of those who are oppressed? We are fortunate, beloved brothers and sisters, because many of us are in countries wherein our rights are protected, that we can freely speak our mind, do um, what is lawful, and we are protected. But many of our brethren are still in dangerous places, victims of injustice and oppression and persecution. And they even use the law and justice to prosecute and oppress other people. We should defend the fatherless and the widows. And this has been shown to us by our Lord God when everything unfolded before our very eyes. Sister Tani Manalo, and Brother Angel Manalo, the fatherless and the widow, pleaded for help. There were those who heeded the call. They helped what happened to them. Many of them turned out to be persecuted as well, oppressed. And there were even those who were killed for doing what is right. What happened to the rest? They also tried to help. But when they saw that those who already help the oppressed, those who defended the, the orphans and fight for the rights of the widows are the ones who were persecuted and oppressed, what happened? They became silent. They chose not to do anything. They distanced themselves. And there are those who probably thought, okay, I know what's happening, but I choose not to help. Probably not at this time. Maybe someday I will help, but not now because I don't want to be involved in whatever this is happening. Let's read what's written here in Proverbs 3, 27 to 28. <clears throat> Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it is in your power to help them. If you can help your neighbor now, don't say, come back tomorrow, and then I'll help you. Unfortunately, there are those who subscribe to this kind of mentality. There are those who would even go as far as to say, no, we have the means to help. Uh, there are many of us who chipped in to be able to come up with some considerable amount of money to be able to help those, but we will not use it for now. 
Or there are those who would say, we're just waiting for them to ask for help. We're just waiting for this brother to tell us, hey, can you help us? Can you give us some assistance? So they will hold it, whatever help they can give. That is why it is important for God's people to truly understand that if ever we have the blessings that we receive day in and day out, the life and strength that we have, or whatever it is in this world, in this life, it is not because we are good. It is not because we are who we are, but because it is our Lord God who continues to give us these blessings. Now, it will just boil down to whether you will allow yourself to be an instrument of good or an instrument of not doing good. But for those who chose to do good, we will not withhold the good that we can give to those who deserve it, to those who are in need, especially if we have the capacity to help them. Do you know anybody with this same kind of mentality? Come back tomorrow and I'll help you. Or maybe someday we'll help, but not now. Now is the time they need our help. What if, like they say, tomorrow never comes? Or that day would be too late? Whatever we were reserving to help for them would probably be in vain. So there is a difference between doing and not doing something that is good. Now, other people might be thinking, well, it's probably just the same. If I do it now or do it later, it's still the same. I'll still be doing good. But if we know that it is something that is needed now, and still we chose not to do it, what does the Bible say? Let's read the last word here, uh, verse here in James chapter 4 and the verse is 17. So then if we do not do the good we know we should do, we are guilty of sin. This is not something that we should be guilty of, brothers and sisters. Why? Because we have gone so far. We have already endured so much. We saw what other people are going through. We are fortunate enough that we are not going through the same trials that they are. Many of us are fortunate enough to be in a position of strength to be able to help others. But if we know what is right and we know that there is good that we should do and then we chose not to do it, then we are no different than the oppressors themselves. So how can we make sure that as we continue in our sojourn, as we do what is commanded by our Lord God into this new era, into this new year that has been given unto us, we should move forward and onward, going stronger and stronger, but only for those who will remain faithful to our Lord God and do what he commands. Those are the people who truly imitate and emulate the life and faith of our former leaders because our former leaders sacrifice so much so that others may live, so that others may receive the pristine doctrines, so that others may be able to fulfill their duties unto our Lord God. Let that be our legacy as well, brothers and sisters. Let us not wait to hear bad news from other people saying that, I'm sorry, brother, but it's too late. Now that we are able to help, now that we are able to do good, let's do good. Let's seek justice. Let's help the oppressed. Let's defend the orphans and the widows. This is not, not the time to choose sides or you know, to, to look for popularity or to gain admiration from other people. No, this is the time for us to be united, 
to be humble, to be obedient to the will of our Lord God and allow ourselves to be used as instruments so that God's love, compassion, and help may reach those who are truly in need of this. May our Lord God continue to bless us and guide us as we traverse a new year of our life. Make it count, brothers and sisters. Let this year be the year that God will unravel everything in our life. Provide the resolution that we are all praying for, that we have been asking for from our Lord God. But it can only happen if our hearts and minds and faith are all united in doing what is good. Let us all stand and we shall pray. <clears throat> our loving Father in heaven, thank you so much, O oh God, because we know that you are the one guiding your people. Thank you, Father, for despite the many trials that we have gone through, you have always been there to guide your people. There are those who started with us who may no longer be with us. But Father, we are thankful that you continue to choose your people so that we may be able to follow you. Father, we are not perfect. We are far from being perfect before your sight. We are filled with shortcomings and iniquities. But because of your love and your compassion, you mold us and guide us every day so that we may be better Christians and we may be able to continue following your teachings. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters who are still in dangerous places. There are those who are in jail. Many families have been torn apart. Lives disrupted. Father, only you can give the resolution to all of this. It is our faith that there is a reason for all of this so that more people would be enlightened, so that you can test the faith of all of your children. And we may be able to come out of it triumphant and to be able to prove to you that you are the one we will follow come what may in this life. Father, for those who will be faithful to you, continue to bless each and every one of us. Give us the things that we need in life so that we may in turn use them in helping those who are in need. If there are those who are sick, Father, heal them. If there are those who are growing weak, strengthen them. Father, fulfill all your promises to your children so that we may continue to use this life and strength in giving glory to your holy name. It is our fervent hope, Father, that once again, you have strengthened our faith. You have strengthened our resolve and we will be guided as we continue to traverse in this path. For all of these things we humbly ask and beg in the name of our Lord, Christ Jesus. Amen.